Hello everyone and thank you for joining us. Today we are talking about caustics and redshift. In part one of this lesson, our contributor Theo Daly will give us a quick answer on how to set up caustics. Then in part two, Theo will go more in depth by giving you a breakdown of this scene. There are a lot of tips and tricks throughout this one, so let's jump in and see what it's all about. So what are caustics? Essentially it's a phenomenon where light would literally go through a transparent object, whether it's glass or water, or even a plastic and essentially hits another surface and it bounces off. So technically almost all the light that we see indoors is caustic. It's just most renderers have set it up in a way that's far more efficient and you turn on caustics only when you want to get sort of these patterns and things, you know, in pools or on the surface of grounds or around a glass. Otherwise things take quite a bit of long time to um, render. So that's the short answer in terms of what caustics are. Now the big thing with this scene is, you know, how do you get this type of look? How do you get these effects and caustic? So I have this scene already set up and everything's already on. So what I'm just going to do is actually have them off and then just turn them on one by one. Okay, so I have everything turned off and essentially you're just going to go step by step to activate caustic. So first thing is I have a spotlight and I'm going over to this parameter called photon. I'm just going to click so it says emit caustic photons. Next, on whatever object you have that you want to emit caustics, you essentially have to put an RS object tag on it, go to the visibility tag, click it on, and then you want to make sure that you have cast caustic photons checked on. So with those two things on, you have caustics in the scene, and all you have to do next is make sure that in your renderer, you have bucket on. And as you can see, it's basically activating and turning on, and there you have it. That's all you need to get caustics. As you can see, though, this is quite splotchy. Um, so the next thing to do would be to start to clean that up. So, you know, the first thing I would do is go to my photons, and it's set to 100,000 as uh, standard. Uh, I go up to a million immediately, and then from there I go even higher. So in this case, you know, I'm going to do a million and see how that looks but I'm pretty sure I'm going to want to increase that. So you can see, the more caustics you emit, the more clear the image, the shapes uh, start to unite. So in this one, I'm actually going to put it up to 9 million. And my intensity, I'm actually going to put that up to, let's say, 2. Well, that's actually generating, I'm going to go over to the render settings. And in my caustic section, where it says blur radius 0.1, that I'm going to actually increase to 1. Essentially what you're trying to do with these two settings right here is an interplay where you're trying to increase the amount of photons so you get literally more stippled dots that can start to unite together to create sort of that pattern. But the blur is sort of going to uh, unite them together with a blur. So it's almost like a soft Gaussian blur. You can sort of look at it that way. And you know you can increase the blur radius up even higher if you need to or even more photons and as you can see immediately you're starting to get sort of this effect and you know that seems pretty good i'm just gonna actually let's make my blur radius uh 1.5 and intensity let's make it four and what i've done as well is in my sampling just to make this go faster i've changed my threshold to 0.5 Normally that's 0 0.01. Um, and again, just because I want to get an image really quickly and make sure that this, you know, I can just iterate and revise over and over and over. That's what I'm doing. So, you know, when I'm happy with this, then I'd go down in my uh, automatic sampling threshold to be lower to get a, uh, you know, clearer image so you don't get all this grain everywhere else. But as you can see, this is giving me the look and, you know, that would be all you need to do to get caustics into your scene. Okay, so I'm going to go through this scene a little bit more in detail and just sort of explain you know, each setting and the camera and everything. So if you want to create something like this, you can as well. So this is what it looks like normally. I'm just going to turn off bucket mode just to go quicker and just get out of my camera. And here you can see I literally just have a simple plane that has a bend deformer on it and essentially I have a few lights in here I'm just going to turn off um, all of them besides the dome light and a camera I have a pool with a tube 
just cutting out for the ground. And this stone light, like I said, it just has a HRI, just really, really low exposure. So when I go back to the camera, I'm just going to turn one light on at a time. So this one just, you know, it might not seem like it does a whole lot, but it's just giving me a little bit of fill right there. I have another light in the back that just sort of gives you this. Uh, then I have that dome light, so it gives you overall bounce in the scene. And then I have the spotlight itself. So as you can see, the spotlight itself, when I turn it on, not a whole lot happens. So if I turn this off, you see it's still black. What I've done is, in the ray for the spotlight, I've turned off diffuse specular. So that's what it would look like. Um, I'm only using it to uh, emit caustics into the scene. So that way, I can have my lighting set up and change this as I need. And then the scene itself is lit. When I turn on bucket mode, then the caustics cut it. And then let's get into uh, sort of the material creation. So I'm just going to turn on this other material, which is just a simple glass. And uh, open up the material shader graph. Wait for that to come up. And it's all I've done is literally taken the base setting and switch it to water and left everything the same. In optimization, I've turned off this called dim internal reflections uh, when i turn it on uh, that's what it is normally it'll be a faster render but for glass material it won't be as realistic the easiest way to show that actually is literally going to you know the documentation and it just you know shows you hey when it's enabled that's what it looks like but when disabled you get extra bounces so that's the biggest difference that you're going to see it'll make your render slower but when you're using glass materials, you want it to feel as realistic as possible. The other uh, thing that I've changed is in the advanced, is the shadow opacity. Right now it's set to one. If I set that to zero, which is what its standard set is, you can see the glass that doesn't actually give you a shadow whatsoever. So putting that to one gives you the full shadow. You can see the glass gets darker a little bit. You can mix it if you like. So you have like a little bit of the shadow. Uh, but again, that's those two settings are pretty integral when you're trying to make stuff that feels more realistic. And again, you know, when I put on bucket mode, um, with just this setting as is, you'll see that in a second it's just going to construct. Um, you'll see that it's going to be fairly interesting. And, you know, I'm using this model uh, not, you know, by chance. You know, I wanted to create something that had some real interest in it. So... It's picking up all the micro facet detail in the hand texture, you know, in the material itself, and then just the fact that there's all these different fingers. Now, if I were to show you what a, you know, sort of normal render would look like, you know, it's not going to be as interesting. I mean, it's still going to look nice, but, you know, this is just literally taking the, you know, going here, going to Toros, and then putting it here and just having the light. Um, I blurred it a little bit more, but, you know, that's sort of what you're going to get. I have this other, you know, one that I downloaded, and it sort of gave you this sort of speckled, dappled look, because it's hitting all these different areas, and like I said, with the hand, you know, you're going to get some more interesting, complex stuff. So, again, caustics are only as interesting as the object that you put there. So, you know, just so you know that. Okay, so back to this. Um, so, let's put on the material that's, you know, a little bit more interesting. And what I've done to sort of create the setup is super simple. It's just one material blender, two materials, and, you know, a noise as the blend layer. So this first material is just your standard copper with a little bit of roughness. Uh, I put in the bump of this material this, so, you know, the texture is a little bit more rough. Uh, I have this other material, which is the glass, and it's got uh, a lower dispersion, and that's what's giving me the color through everything. And then the blend color, which is choosing which of the two textures go where, is this. And it, all it is is a, you know, one of the maximum noises, a booyah. I've changed some of the settings a little bit to play with it. The high clip, the low clip, contrast. And the big thing was changing the overall scale just because of the actual model, and then also these scales. So if I set these to one, 
you'll see that's what you would normally get. And all I'm doing is stretching it out and then changing the overall scale because it needed to be really, really small. So with that, you know, you're going to get these two materials mixed in with one another. And again, you know, if I go here and I go to optimize, I turned off called dim internal reflections and then advanced. I am using the shadow opacity a little bit. If I put it to one, you'll see it got a lot darker in there. And, you know, depending on what you want to do, maybe you just want it all bright. But, you know, I liked 0.3. It gave me a little mix of realism and, you know, sort of this abstract look. So with all of that in the scene, you know, I just have the lights. And again, as I said, like, you know, the caustics, that's all this one spotlight is emitting. So I have that set up. And then in here, blur, blur radius is two. Uh, threshold, you know, it normally would be something like that. But just to go really quickly, I'll put my five, turn that on. And just wait till it starts to construct the caustics. And, you know, we'll get that set up. And playing with dispersion and also the type of object that you have is what's going to really give you um, some real interest. And then, you know, I have a target right here. So wherever I move this, that's where my all my lights are sort of going to adhere to. So I just sort of put it to the base of it. So, you know, this cone is sort of hitting, you know, the top of this part to that part and just spreading out. And then, you know, once I'm ready to render something better, I do higher sample, or, well, lower samples. Let's put it back to its normal, regular settings. And then it would be more about playing with the blur radius and how many photons to get, you know, a really, really clean image. And, you know, that's pretty much it in terms of caustics and sort of what you can, you know, set up. It's a very, very simple um, tool to use. It can, you know, slow your renders down, so you have to be just, you know, really cognizant of that. And, you know, just have fun and, you know, just try different materials and try different textures. And also, you know, I'm saying to use a spotlight because it gives you a really concentrated, you know, sort of spray, but you can use an area light and see how that looks. It'll probably be more dispersed. Um, you know, I think those two would be the best ones to try to play with. But the, the biggest thing is, you know, just check out your materials and textures and, you know, the models you're using. And, you know, maybe it's you have a sphere with one type of glass texture and then another one's a water and then another one's something different and see how they you know penetrate uh one by one by one and give you a different look so you know with that hopefully you know you have enough information to create something you know exciting and can't wait to see what you do mm -hmm.